here's the key word, quad, meaning four, four-sided figures. So quadrilaterals are also polygons, right? And a polygon is any shape that's two-dimensional, that's flat, has to be flat, not 3D, but 2D. So flat is two-dimensional, 2D. And they have to have no curves, no curves, right? So like a square is a polygon. Any quadrilateral is a polygon, and a triangle is a polygon. And we'll talk more about polygons, and there's different shapes of polygons. So a circle is not a polygon, because a circle has curves, right? So a circle is not a polygon. So let's look at our quadrilaterals. Before we talk about that, let's talk about a def some definitions like hierarchy. You're going to hear that word, hierarchy. So a hierarchy is just shows a relationship between things. They have certain a certain relationship, and there's a certain order to the, that relationship where one is higher than the other, or there's certain levels. So for, you might hear about hierarchy maybe in the army, right? There's ranks. Let's say, for example, I'm the, as an officer, I'll put officer here, right? You can be an officer or an, or an enlisted uh, person, right? So a sergeant is not an officer, but the highest officer in the army is a general, right? And there's different stars of a general. You can be a, a one, two, three, and a four star. The four star is the highest. So the hierarchy, as they go down, they go from a general to the lowest is a second lieutenant, LT, second lieutenant. So as you go up the scale, they have a relationship because they're all in the army or they're all in the navy, Excuse me, but if they were in the Navy, it wouldn't be general, it would be admiral. But they're all in the Army or they're all in the Air Force. And again, the higher hierarchy here shows rank. And general's the highest, second lieutenant is the lowest. And if you want to know, there's first lieutenant, there's captain, there's major, there's lieutenant colonel, colonel. And then there's your four types of generals, like we talked about before. So a hierarchy shows a relationship and an order. And we're going to look at it with quadrilaterals, or the hierarchy of quadrilaterals. All right, so quadrilaterals are four-sided figures. And you see it's like a tree, right? Like a family tree. That's what a hierarchy is, too, also. They have a relationship because they're all four-sided figures. So a parallelogram is over here. And you see there's another one, another two over here that are not connected to the other tree. So look at that for a minute. You see this thing called a deltoid. Well, we'll talk about a deltoid in a minute, but a deltoid is a kite. And I'll show you a little bit about that in a minute. So trapezoid and deltoid are on the other side, right? They're four-sided, but they're not part of this tree. So from this tree, you have a parallelogram, and it branches off into a rhombus and a rectangle. And you know these figures, these shapes. And you see the bottom one is a square, a lonely square. So, and here's where it gets tricky. And they'll ask you questions like this, especially on some state tests. A square can be called a rectangle, but a rectangle cannot be called a square. Do you see that? If it's on top, it could be called something on top of it, but not on the bottom. So a rectangle is a parallelogram. A rhombus is a parallelogram. A square is a parallelogram. So see if you can answer this question. Is a parallelogram a square? No. A square is a parallelogram, but a parallelogram is not a square. In other words, this is how you can think about it. Every square is a parallelogram, but not every parallelogram is a square. That's what we mean by it. Every rhombus is a parallelogram. But not every parallelogram is a rhombus. Do you see that? Is it clearer? So every rectangle. Is every rectangle a square? No, but every square is a rectangle. Right? Now, are trapezoids parallelograms? No, they're not. They're not in the same branch. But a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. A square is a quadrilateral. But not every quadrilateral is a square. Not every quadrilateral is a rhombus, but every rhombus is a quadrilateral. All right, so that's the hierarchy there if you want to look at it.
And then let's look at two more terms. Congruent. Congruent means same shape, same size. Absolutely the same. Same sides, same angles. That's what congruent means. And parallel, you should know, parallel lines never touch, right? So this line and this line could be parallel to each other, right? They'll never touch. Doesn't have to be up or down. Parallel lines could be this too. Here's a road and here's another road, let's say. You can say, you might have heard this before as you're traveling on a road. You say the other road is parallel to us, right? Now, the opposite of that would be perpendicular with a cross, like at an intersection, perpendicular. We'll talk about perpendicular at another time. Okay, let's look at some each shape. All right, so let me write parallelogram. There we go. Now, a parallelogram... By the way, parallel again, if you just let's just review that to make sure you understand it. Parallel lines are always the same distance away from each other. The exact same distance away. You can't have a line going like this and then a line going like that. That's not parallel because they're not exactly the same distance. Anywhere you go, they're always the same distance apart. That's what a parallel lines mean. Okay, so a parallelogram, we said, remember in the hierarchy, that they were the highest on one of their branch trees. And again, it's just like a rectangle that's crooked, if you want to look at it that way. Okay, so, so a parallelogram, of course, has four sides. And two sides will always be parallel. The, this side and that side are parallel, and the other two sides will be parallel. Now, they could have equal sides. But if they have equal sides, then it's a rhombus. So... And remember, we said a rhombus is a parallelogram. So they have two pairs. Here's one pair. Here's the other pair of parallel sides. So let me say that again. They have two pairs. Two pairs of parallel sides. Two pairs of parallel sides. So let me show you again. Here's one pair, they're parallel to each other, and these two are parallel to each other. So two pairs of parallel sides is a parallelogram. It also has two pairs of congruent angles. So here's an angle. Remember we use this with the triangle? There's an angle right there. We'll put a little slash mark there saying, well, that's one angle. So if you look diagonally, they have, there's a pair, they're congruent. That degree and that degree will be the same. And this degree, we'll put two slash marks, and that degree, two slash marks, they'll be the same. So they have two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of congruent angles. Two pairs. I remember the word congruent? Same shape, same size. There's our parallelogram, right? So again, two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of congruent angles. There's an angle. These angles are the same. These angles are the same. So I'll draw a shape. You tell me what type of shape it is, right? And then we'll make a definition for it. So what type of shape do you think this is? And you should be familiar with these boxes from the last video we did on triangles. What type of shape is this? It's a rectangle, right? It has two pairs of parallel sides. Well, that's the same as a parallelogram. Two pairs of parallel sides. And it has two pairs of congruent angles. In fact, they're all the same angles they're all 90 degrees. They're all 90 degree angles. So that's a rectangle. Now, if we did this, you know, that is our famous friend, the square. The square has two pairs of parallel sides. In fact, they're all the same. And it has 90 degree angles, just like a rectangle.
So we know a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. And then we have our rhombus. So it's just a tilt square, basically. All the sides are the same. It does not have 90 degree angles. But it has, each angle is the same. So it has two pairs of congruent angles, and they're all the same. Angles, not ankles, right? Remember that. So let's draw a trapezoid now. Trap. Now, again, we said a trapezoid wasn't part of the tree with the parallelogram, but it is it is a quadrilateral, and it could be written, it could be drawn like that, or it could be drawn another way, like this. You can, right, it does not have to have two angled ones like that. It could look like that, and it could look any way, right? It could even look like this, right? It could look like that. So what a parallelogram has, what the trapezoid has, that is, it only has one pair of parallel sides. This pair and this pair, they're not the same length, but they're parallel, right? So they have one pair, not two. The others are not parallel. And let me just draw this over so you can see this. So. On the edge of the trapezoid, so let's make a trapezoid like this. This is the standard way they draw a trapezoid, by the way. Again, here you have one going like this, the other's going like that. They're not parallel. They'll eventually meet, right? They're not parallel. And even if it was straight, they're not parallel. So again, a trapezoid only has one pair of parallel sides. And then the deltoid. Remember I, talked to you, I told you about this deltoid? Well, all a deltoid is, and it's not used too much, not many people call it this, it's a, just a kite, right? Just a kite hanging in the wind, without the string, of course. So it's, and of course, you can make a kite out of a square, too. A square could be a kite, and a rhombus could be a kite, right? But a deltoid is a special kite. And you notice, if we cut this up a little, one side is longer than the other. And they don't, they don't have parallel sides, so it's kind of, one's going like this, this one's going, and it's not like a baseball field either, because a baseball field is more like a square anyway, to tilt like a rhombus, because a baseball field, they all have right angles, but a deltoid does not. So that's all, the, you just think of a deltoid as a kite for now. We'll come back to deltoids in other videos. So we talked about the hierarchy of, of um, quadrilaterals and what they are. So I'll give you one question. Oh, and uh, one important question, actually. Remember we said that a triangle... We'll just create a triangle here. Let's make a better one. This is a right triangle. We said a right tri a triangle has 180 degrees. And we said, when we had our meeting in meets, remember... We had, we can make two triangles with a, and, and create a, a square. So a square, or any quadrilateral, any quadrilateral, the total degrees is 360. So you should be able to find the missing degree of this parallelogram. What do you think? So we'll put these are the degree symbols, remember? So let's say I said that's 25 degrees, and let's say I said this was eh, maybe one, uh, 155. Well, remember I said that they're congruent diagonally across from each other. So if that's 155, this has to be 155. And if that's 25, this has to be 25. And if you add all this together, it has to equal 360. Remember that. So you can find the missing degrees also of quadrilateral.